Jewish style brisket is having a moment, friends. Credit the folks on the show of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel for making Midge's brisket such a centerpiece of the show. Maybe it was the covered dish it was served in, or our love and nostalgia for comfort food. Cooking with a vintage dish and reviving kitchen history are great, but you want your food to taste amazing, right? Well, we know beef, and we're here to tell you, you're gonna love the sweet and savory balance of this brisket. Let's get it started. We're starting with a certified Angus beef brisket flat that's about three and a half to four pounds. I trimmed it up a bit to even out that fat cap. You wanna leave the fat, but you wanna trim down any thick parts. So no more than a quarter inch left on the brisket suits this technique perfectly. Certified Angus beef is your perfect starting point for the best flavor, because if it's not certified, it's not the best. We want a good amount of kosher salt and coarse black pepper over the whole surface. My rule of thumb is about a teaspoon of salt per pound of beef. So we've got three teaspoons of salt in this rub. And I like a ratio of two parts pepper to three parts salt. So we have two teaspoons of pepper here. With all sides seasoned, we'll wrap it up and let that seasoning work its way into the brisket while it hangs out in the fridge overnight. From here, we'll get the other ingredients ready for our braise. Let's make the classic combination, onion, carrot, and celery, called mirepoix. It's the time-tested foundation for building a braise. Now the size of these ingredients depends on the recipe. For us, we want them to be large enough to still be around to eat with the final braise, so I'll cut to a large dice. Do your best to make these three ingredients, onion, carrot, and celery, about the same size. A good amount of garlic is great with this brisket. I want about a quarter cup, so that's about four to six cloves of garlic I picked up. Keep those knife skills sharp with the garlic choppity chop and we can get to cooking. All right, our brisket has had a good night rest and it's ready for action. Just a little oil in the bottom of the brazier and heat on medium high. You don't need a lot of oil. This is especially true because we'll put the fat side down to start the searing. Give it time to get a good brown crust. After a few minutes, it should lift easily and have a deep brown color. Go ahead and peek. Flip and sear the bottom and then get a quick sear on the edges by holding it upright. Good browning is one of the biggest tips to pass on to your friends so they too can cook as well as you do. Pull out the brisket for a minute and dump the mirepoix into the pan. Heat can hang on medium as you move the veg around. We want to caramelize these veggies just a minute to build more flavor and get those seared bits from the brisket off the bottom of the pan. In with the garlic, then with tomato paste. It's good to get that tomato paste all over the veg and have those sugars in the paste start to brown. Now for the unexpected flavor punch. We're using pomegranate juice. It's the perfect tart, sweet boost to our braise. With liquid in the pan, we can work that spatula over the bottom of the pan to get up the last of those flavorful brisket bits. In with a can of diced tomatoes, and lastly, some herbs. Fresh thyme and a few bay leaves. We'll bring the brisket back to the party and nestle it into that veggie goodness. Cover it tightly and head in the oven. So the important thing is I have a tight fitting lid. Couple options here. If you don't have this fancy braising style, it's okay. You can use a roasting pan like this. We could sear in the same pan. So this is only one pan being dirty is the point. Sear in this, but the important thing with this, you have to put foil on it, make it completely tight. Also a more fancy roasting pan like this would work too. The brisket is going to take about three and a half to four hours to braise. So when it's about done and your house is filled with this amazing aroma of braising beef goodness, get some flat leaf parsley and do your knife work thing. We're gonna slice this up. So the ideal internal temperature you wanna target is 200 to 205 degrees. So the slices hold up and the brisket doesn't completely fall apart. Carefully pull the brisket to a cutting board. You want it to rest for 10 minutes and don't rush this. Go back to the brazier for a second and remove the thyme, stems, and the bay leaves. It's a good idea to count how many you started with so you know how many to fish for. If there's any excess fat on the surface, go ahead and skim it off now too. There's not much on here for me to get rid of. With a good slicing knife, we want slices that will hold up and not fall apart. That's about a quarter inch thick. Now these slices will head back into the braising pan with all that incredible flavor. Make sure the slices are submerged, so go ahead and push them down to cover things up. That heat of the liquid will keep things warm as the slices get coated with all of the flavors. Let them hang out for at least 30 minutes for the best tenderness and juiciness. And we're ready to serve. 
By this time, everyone in your crew has probably been circling with their stomachs growling, begging for a bite. Time to give them what they want. Onto the serving platter with the slices and ladle a generous amount of that braising liquid and veg over those slices. Some parsley to garnish and mmm, mmm. -hmm, it's time to eat. So tender. You're gonna love the sweet and savory balance of this dish. This is a classic done right. See you next time in the test kitchen.